Welcome back to Old Souls Travel. You are here with Turtle and we are in Panama City today and this is probably the most modern, beautiful city in all of Central America and I was really blown away by that. But of course, it is the history that draws me pretty much anywhere. And the history is much, much more than the Panama Canal. Although the Panama Canal is amazing and it is somewhere that you have to visit, the rest of the city is absolutely worth you spending a little time. So we're gonna talk about how we would spend 48 hours in Panama City with me, that means digging into the past a little bit and where I suggest that you start is at the first European settlement on all of the Pacific. Welcome to Panama Viejo, right inside of bustling and beautiful Panama City. Stay tuned, we've got a whole lot of great things for you today and I'm excited to show you around a country that I was just blown away by and that I think you will be too. things that most impressed me about Panama Viejo is that it is still preserved despite being right in the middle of the city. The city was pretty much built around it and you've got traffic and you've got the hustle and bustle and right inside there is this treasure of history that's just amazing. Behind me are some really old iron cannons and uh, a couple of them have been held up pretty well, which makes me think that they aren't actually from the site. But a few of them look like they're probably authentic and were found from here, especially this one. It has seen some aging. You can look around the front and look around the cannons for free, but if you want to get into the site, you pay your $10 for foreigners and you can either walk in or you can take an ATV or a tram. And since we were the second people there and wanted to be the first on the site, we jumped in the tram with a couple other people and started making our way down towards the main part of the city. And you get to see some of the ruins here, including probably the most dynamic, which is the bell tower. And that was absolutely beautiful, even from a distance. But I always suggest that you start with the museum, not just because I run a museum, but because museums are awesome. And this one starts out so modern and then it leads directly chronologically to the Native Americans. And I think this is really important for you to understand before you see the modern European history. We're here at the Museum of Panama Viejo, which is the original settlement and fortification in Panama City, which was the second in all of Panama. So this was the first European settlement on the Pacific side of the Caribbean or in the Pacific at all. But what I love about this is it starts out with this great display about what it is to be Panamanian and then it forces you into a chronological follow along and you come into an area that discusses all of the native tribes, which seems to have been very closely related to the same lifestyle of the Maya and kind of bridged the Maya civilization, which would have been further north, with some of the South American civilizations. And they had a really complex pottery system. It doesn't look like they got into too much of the monumental architecture that you expect out of a Maya culture, but uh, they seemed like they were really well-developed and uh, had a pretty good life here. 
and then the Spanish came and life changed. Better or worse, it changed and they probably got smallpox. Which, when combined with other factors, led to a decline in population of about 90% which was a pretty common number throughout the Americas where the Spanish unintentionally spread a lot of European diseases in the name of the spread of Christianity, at least ostensibly. But one thing that was left behind, which was neat, is a whole lot of really cool religious artifacts that are over 300 years old. And the section of the museum that houses these is absolutely one of the highlights. I like how they made this into a chapel. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? No, I, I didn't it's really, that. It's a really classy way to like, if you're gonna throw a bunch of Christian art into something, make it look like a, ca a chapel because that took a lot of forethought with this floor plan. It means that the floor above doesn't have something in this section. <laughs> And that was only one of the touches that were really nice. There was also some of the artifacts that were used there and used in the expansion of the Spanish and would have been essential for there. But one of those is the other thing they were looking for, which is gold. And there was so much gold and silver that was shipped through this area and that was taken by force. Uh, the people who were left in many of these areas did fight despite their diminished abilities and took a lot of guns, germs, and steel. Shout out to Jared Diamond to accomplish what they needed to accomplish according to their charter that was was dictated by the royalty back in Spain at the time and you can see some of the decadence of the Spanish people here but you also see a lot of the utilitarian things that were used in everyday life and that includes some really nice plates and some nice blown glass and there was a really cool outdoor kitchen which they showed with uh, lots of storage accoutrements and just the things that you needed every day and some of the things that maybe the pirates needed which leads us to our next part of the story by 1671, the Spanish had a very, very nice community here at Panama Viejo, and it was pretty expansive. There were a few churches and a couple of monasteries and lots of housing on the outside, some of it for the colonists and some of it for the Native Americans who had survived but this was not destined to survive very much longer as a city. And this is one of my favorite parts of the story. As you learned last week, I am related to a couple of famous pirates, but the one who is most famous in Panama Viejo is probably the most famous pirate of all time, mostly thanks to this. And uh, of course we're talking about Henry Morgan. And the first thing you wanna learn about Captain Morgan is the difference between a mixer and a sipper. Private stock is much more smooth the other is much more spicy, which is more in keeping with how Captain Morgan lived his life, and more on that in a moment. Captain Morgan was quite the scoundrel. This was a Welsh poor man, and he was conscripted into essentially slave labor in the Caribbean, and when he was freed, he really didn't have a whole lot of options of things to do, and so he became a pirate. And he rose pretty quickly in the ranks of piracy and became really, really famous for what happened in Panama Viejo. But beforehand, there were some things that led up to this and made it so amazing. Number one, he raided Portobello, and you'll learn a lot more about Portobello if you stick with us in two weeks. 
And then he did this daring raid in Maracaibo where he took his lead ship and he set it on fire and sent it in to the Spanish ships. And that was a big victory. And what that did for his Panama Viejo raid, which is what we're talking about today, is that it was able to recruit for him nearly 2,000 pirates, which is the largest standing pirate army of all time. And they came over in January of 1671, landed over near the mouth of the Chagres River, which if you think of it was kind of like the Panama Canal before the Panama Canal. And for six or seven days, he came across attacking little fortifications. And when he got to Panama City, there was this giant battle and the Spanish leader was actually pretty vicious and able to fight relatively well being so unmanned, but he did eventually lose and Captain Morgan kept a bunch of people hostage and waited for a bounty, which was something that they would normally do. But when he left, he burnt the place to the ground and that is what led to the ruins that we will see today. And that is what led to them moving to Casco Viejo, which we will see next Saturday at 10 o'clock. So stay tuned. So we're here at Panama Viejo, and uh, this is a great little ruin here. A lot of it's been stripped away to build Casco Viejo, but this started to be built in 1519, and then it stayed here until 1671. So this was a really important port for where the Spanish treasure came in from Peru, and then they would ship it across to where we were yesterday, either of the two places we were yesterday, depending on the year, and then it would be shipped out to Havana, and then it would cross in front of Florida and go back to Spain. But uh, these ruins are awesome, and the museum that we just went through, that's a good museum. It was worth the $10 just for the museum, and now we get to go walk around and see all this history. I am loving every minute of Panama. It is so much more than I expected. You guys should get out here soon. The building that you're first drawn to is the bell tower of La Catedral. This was the main church in this portion of town. It was built in 1535 and then rebuilt and reinforced in 1580. But they did not make it of stone at first and luckily in 1610 they decided to spend 16 years rebuilding it in stone and that is why it was preserved during the fires in 1671. It's absolutely beautiful. You can really see by the wall here that it was a large imposing structure itself and it would have housed a lot of the people from this area and it's right next to the municipal buildings which are called Cabildo Municipal. These were actually built about the same time, but there was an earthquake in 1612 that destroyed them, and they decided that they were going to rebuild it with masonry, and much of that has been moved to the Plaza Mayor in Casco Viejo, and you can visit that next week, as you can much of the Convento de Santo Domingo, which takes up most of the remaining area over here in the main complex. There's a few different places like El Bispado, which we're seeing here, where that was the home of all the Catholic bishops. But one cool thing about Convento de Santo Domingo is that they actually like whitewashed it and painted it a bunch of different colors that made it not look like a convent, which worked out really, really well because it saved the altar from being taken by the pirates and they didn't even burn that area. So they were able to actually bring that over and now it's housed in the new San Jose church in Casco Viejo. It's rare that I'm happier than when I'm actually in ruins. I mean, if you could put the ruins on the beach, which this kind of is, or you can put the ruins up on a mountaintop, I probably get a little bit of more of my nature boy thing going and uh, it probably exacerbates the joy. But uh, I love to be in a place that was once vibrant and try to feel the essence 
of where it was and kind of just listen to the wind blow and listen to the birds chirp and see the animals that have taken over the site and it just kind of adds to something and so an area like this that was preserved in the middle of a city is so rare and so valuable at the same time it's just it's enough to make you speechless and uh, really these aren't the greatest ruins that I've ever seen but all ruins are magnificent and it's nice that they actually still exist because in most places in the world we just built right on top of them and I was really glad that they did not build on top of these and I think you will be too especially if you head back to the bell tower and check out the surrounding views The original staircase was this circular jobby here and of course it's modernly rebuilt you can see from the outside that that was actually something that they did and you can see some little remnants like that little remnant there of the stairs that stayed after it collapsed but for now we go up these it looks safer too which is always a good thing when you're on vacation safety first people what I loved about the new staircase is that there were these platforms that you would get to and out of the windows you would see glimpses both into the past and what Panama Viejo was and into what Panama had become which is absolutely magical and then you head towards the exit and you can actually ride to the exit if you want to with that same ATV or the same tram system but I suggest that you walk it's kind of surreal to walk through and watch how there becomes less and less of the ruins as you walk further and further towards the new town and the reason for this is that they were able to use a lot of the stone from this in building next week's destination of Casco Viejo the one exception however is a really nice church that they lift standing this church has a really nice surprise in it I know we got to see a lot of the statues and the bells and the things that were used in the religious practices here but from what I understood the statue that stands in the church actually stood here through the fire and it remains here till this day behind glass to protect it but it really is kind of nice to see it in situ and I just really enjoyed this church. I can't imagine how grand it would have been at the time when it was built and it stands as a remembrance of those people in that time as do all the other walls that you'll see along the way. Keep your eye out also for some iguanas. There's a lot of iguanas in the area. They seem to be the only inhabitants of Panama Viejo at this time, but they certainly lend a bit of authenticity to it, as do some of the fruit trees and things like that. But the value really of Panama Viejo is the window into the past and I'm really glad that they preserved it and that they continue to preserve it and they're doing such a good job of teaching this chapter in Panamanian history. And this is by far not the end of our Panama trip. We packed so much into four days. And next week you're gonna see my favorite part of Panama City. And the following week, we are gonna go over to the Caribbean coast and we're actually going to learn some things about what I do as a day job. And we're gonna visit some really amazing ports with some really amazing pirate history, a little family history, and I'll even show you an artifact that I found on my Panama trip, which I say was given to me by a family member. So cheers to you guys, cheers to Captain Morgan, and cheers to finding yourself on the journey.